I'm back today with another design team project for Dies R Us. This time I'm making a fun interactive card with the Double Slider Surprise Die Set from Lawn Fawn. Hello and welcome to Debbie J's Crafting Corner. I'm Debbie and each week I show you how you can create awesome cards and other crafty projects. Because if I can make it, you can too. So if you'd like to see more tutorials and inspirational videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. For today's card, I'm going to do another attempt. I went ahead and went into my stash and grabbed out another of my interactive dies from Lawn Fawn. This is such a really cool idea, but I've only made it a couple of times. And again, it's kind of where I have a little trouble making those scenes, like I mentioned on my last Dies RS Design Team card. So I've been playing around a little bit, and I did create this one that is a sample, and I saw where I cut something not quite right but it still functions just fine so we're gonna make another one um, this time I kind of want a coffee theme so I've got a few different stamps um, this one I don't think is actually available anymore it's from the greeting farm but it's got this cute little girl and her coffee cup and it says need coffee and I think that's perfect and then this one from Fiskers is a lot of love and coffee from stamp abilities mostly I like the coffee beans we've got these that are um, outlines and these that are solid so I want to use kind of both of those and maybe a couple of the other images as well so well, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this so the first thing I need to do is cut out some of the pieces uh, I have gone ahead and cut out some of those off screen so we've got this piece here so this piece basically is the main piece you need to create the mechanism so I've got one of those this basically creates the wrapper this piece is used to make these fun little pullouts so I've cut out a few of those I also cut out a notch on one end of both pieces of the wrapper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stamp some of those images onto this panel in vintage photo. Just give it a little bit of a coffee kind of color. So I have picked out two of the coffee bean images and the little coffee cup. I thought that was kind of cute. And I'm just going to basically create my own patterned paper with these. That looks nice. Next, I'm going to um, stamp out and color the girl from that Greeting Farm stamp set in Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to color all of this with some alcohol markers. And I'm using my stamp platform because sometimes I don't get quite as dark of an impression as I would like and this way I can go back and do it a second time if it's not quite dark enough. And as you can tell, it's not quite dark enough. So I'm using my Spectrum Noir markers to do all of the coloring of this cute little coffee-loving um, character, I guess you'd say. Uh, so I've got, I'm going to be showing all of the caps as I go along on this. And I did speed up the coloring quite a bit because it's basically simple coloring. You guys have seen me do it a million times and I don't want to keep you here all day. One thing that I have been trying a little bit more lately is using a purple marker to kind of try to deepen those, um, deepen the contrast, deepen the shadows a bit more, and then of course blending them out really well with one of the um, dark to mid-tone um, colors of the flesh tones. These are the FS series of the Spectrum Noir markers. So I'm just good, going to go ahead and um, play some music and let you guys watch the coloring. If you do have any questions, as always, please leave me a comment down in the um, down in the comment section, and you can always reach me over in our Facebook group, Crafting with Debbie.
Next, I'm going to start assembling the mechanism for the double slider. What I'm using here is actually just a so recycle material. It is a two and a quarter inch wide strip from a Dollar Tree bag. Now, you guys know I do love my Dollar Tree, so I've got I usually have one of these around, but you could use any plastic bag. You basically just want to make sure that it can slide really well. And what I'm doing is I'm adding an eighth inch strip of score tape to one end of that plastic bag. I removed the release paper from that piece of score tape and now I'm going to gently wrap the other end of the plastic bag around our track piece, not too tight, not too loose. We want this to be able to slide easily around our track. Then I cut off the excess of that um, plastic bag. For the next step, we're going to be adding some more score tape. First, shift your slider plastic all the way to the left side of the track and add a piece of score tape where the plastic overlaps. Then, turn the track piece over and repeat on the other side. You may remember that I cut four of the little panel pieces. This is because I felt cardstock was a little thin and I wanted a little more stability. So I'm adhering the dark brown pieces onto the back of the coffee pattern pieces with some dot liner adhesive. Now we can add those panels to the mechanism. I made sure that the score tape was at the left end of the front of the track and removed the release paper. Then I took the panel that will slide out to the right, lined it up, and adhered it to the slider plastic. Next we do the same thing on the back. You need to make sure that the back of the panel is facing you though when you adhere it down so that the front of the panel will be seen when the slider is used. Now that we have the mechanism working, it's time to put it into the pocket sleeve that will go on the front of our cart. On the pocket pieces that we cut, there is a score line and flap. I'm adding some score tape to the flaps on the side that'll face outward. Then I'll adhere these together. Next, we'll add the track to the pocket. To get the track ready, we're going to add a, some 1 8 inch score tape to the top and the bottom of this track piece right along the edge. Now, if the adhesive is placed any further down, it may get caught on the panel and the slider won't work. Ask me how I know. Then we do the same thing on the other side. So that means you're going to have the score tape on both sides of the track. Next, I'm burnishing all of that score tape down. I have a little trouble removing the um, release paper sometimes, and burnishing it does definitely help a little bit. I'm also going to use a pokey tool or a craft pick to help me get that off. My nails are not wanting to, to grab any of the score tape release paper today. So I'm removing the score tape release paper on the back of the panel and then making sure that my little panels are exactly in the center so that they don't get caught on that adhesive. I had a hard time on a previous one. And then I'm just going to line that up in the crease, making sure that I've got my pattern paper piece on the outside. And so I'm going to just tack that down on both the top and the bottom and double check, make sure that the slider is still working. Okay, let's go ahead and remove the rest of that release paper. We're going to remove it from the top, 
from the bottom and from the other flap on that sleeve pocket. Then we fold the flap in, adhere that down, and close the pocket. And then test again to make sure that this still works. I want to make sure that the recipient knows what to pull and to make it a little easier to pull. So I'm using one of the dies that's for making a pull tab. I went ahead and cut that out with some dark brown cardstock. And then I'm cutting the little um, arrow triangle out of some light brown. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down where I've got the notch. Now you'll probably notice that I only put one notch on this one. That's because I want to have something else popping out of the the other end kind of as a surprise. There are lots of options for using that other end of that slider and what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of different options. One is using this as a holder for a gift card so that would be just too fun and to do that I'm just using some glue dots. Now on this Amazon card here this one is already used it's not anything I'm going to be giving to anyone I'm just using it as a demonstration right now but I'm putting a couple of these removable glue dots on the back of it. Then I'm going to pull the tab and just open this up, extending it all the way, and then slide that gift card right inside. It's a perfect fit for this. I think this is just such a cool idea. And if I had a Starbucks card, I probably would have used that, and that would have worked so much better and would have been perfect as a gift. Another option would be to add some images or a sentiment to the other end. Okay. So now I'm going to put her over here on the side. And just adhering her with, again, some of that art glitter glue. And then I want to give her her little cup of coffee. Okay, so now we need to do the rest of the front panel. Now we've got our little mechanism all done and one more test. I think that's just too cute. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a sentiment on instead. So we've got, I'm going to go with thanks a latte. And basically all I'm going to do is just stamp around the edges with some Distrex Oxide ink and that should give it just enough interest around those edges that that's going to look pretty cool. Now if you've got a different brown you could go with that but this is what I've got. And to me, it does look a little busy, but let's take a look once the pattern, the panel is down. It gives it just a little bit of interest on the outside. So I think that's going to work out pretty good. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and add this panel to the center of my Thanks a Latte panel. So now I'm going to go ahead and adhere this panel down onto my card base. And this is going to leave about a sixteenth of an inch around. So it's that little pop of white. Okay, and now I'm going to get out my foam tape and put that on the back of this panel. And part of the reason that we put the foam tape off on, partially it's for, for dimension, but I figure that it's going to also make, a, make you have a little bit more room for your finger when you go to pull the tab. So I will put one in the center and not go to the tab there. 
Okay. So even without the tab, even without that double slider, still is a super, super cute card. As a finishing touch, I scattered a few yellow and pink crystals to, to the front of the card, and that finishes up this Dyes R Us design team project for today. Some of the products that I use can be found at the Dyes R Us website, and I've left links to these down in the description below. Here are some other videos that I know you'll enjoy. Thank you so much for dropping by, and remember, if I can make it, you can too. See you next time.